So in today's build part two of my custom Securitron build, I need to do four things. One, design uh, the beginnings of the faceplate. Two, actually make those parts using 3D printing and my laser cutter. Three, mount some electronics to it. Four, teach those electronics to detect coffee mugs and whatever else I want. Let's get to it with the design aspect. Actually, there's one more thing I need to do, and that's let you guys know about today's sponsor, Squarespace, the all-in-one platform where you can get started building your website today. I don't know anything about web design, but I made my website with Squarespace, and it only took a few hours. And that's because Squarespace has templates that allow you to choose what type of website you're going to make and just rearrange things to look how you want. You just have to choose what you want your website to do and look like, and Squarespace handles the work for you. So whether you wanna start an online store with an e-commerce template, they've got you covered. And they've got over 350 top-level domains to choose from, that's the like .com part. So you can customize your website exactly how you want. And if you're ready to get started with your website or domain today, you can get 10% off by using my coupon code. So head on over to squarespace.com forward slash Mr. Volt and use coupon code Mr. Volt to save 10% off your next website or domain today. Let's build something. All right, so here we are in my office slash bedroom, and I'm going to walk you through what I've got so far for the CAD model. Uh, in Fusion 360, and yes, that is what I use for CAD. That is uh, entirely what I use for CAD because it's really versatile, uh, and I have no association with Autodesk. It's just a cool piece of software. And here is my model. All right, so here we go. I am in Fusion, and let's walk through how I went about this. So I do have the uh, game model um, of a Securitron right here. They're probably some of the least organic or complex um, in terms of like a chassis design for a robot from Fallout. So that's uh, another reason that I like them. They're, they're much more plausible uh, to be built. Um, and as you can see, if I turn them on, let me turn it on. Uh, there we go. Go-kart tire and da -da 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 bezel. So, uh, this model is already scaled down to match the proportions of the real world tire that I've got, my um, 10 inch go-kart tire um, and my eight inch four by three aspect ratio LCD. So let's, uh, let's turn off the New Vegas model and get into um, what I've got. So this was the rough solid model that I had made a while back um, that just keeps to the general um, profile of Securitron, but this is entirely one piece, which obviously is not useful um, for fabrication, but just to get a sense of how things look and will be put together. So let me turn off that because that's not what I'm using. That's not what I'm building. So I am just going to focus and let's just turn off that. I don't need the tire. We'll do balancing next time. Today we are going to look at the head. So let's turn on the camera tube. All right, first major difference in my design. In the original design of Securitrons, this um, circular component right here is the speaker, but I want this to have computer vision and I think this is a really killer spot for a camera. It's nice and high up and it's relatively close to the face. Um, so that will be a camera in my design. I might, make uh, this little quad block. Doesn't have any features in the game uh, as far as I can tell. So this might be the speaker output, might put some sensors in there, might put a microphone. I don't know, but today we are gonna focus on the camera and the display. So not uh, nothing, nothing crazy going on here. Let's, uh, da, 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 da. all right. So there is our eight inch display. Let me turn off the bezel. It's, pretty straightforward. We've got the display mounted right here and there's a bezel, well, I turned it off in there, a bezel that retains it against the angled body plate right there, or body component, I should say. This is the main face plate, so let's turn off that. The goal for most of my designs is to minimize fabrication and assembly time. So anytime you see a flat surface, I'm going to cut that out of flat stock. It kills me how many people three print flat pieces of plastic. 
And I know that I'm really fortunate to have a laser cutter, but like if you're gonna have a rectangle, just cut out a rectangle. Don't 3D print flat plastic pieces. So I'm going to laser cut this piece and this piece out of wood. And these will just be cardboard for right now. Um, I just want them available so that you can get a sense of scale and so that it looks more secure Um So we've got the LCD right here, but when I flip it around, let's turn on the electronics. I'll talk more about the electronics um, once I have actually got them in the real world, but we've got our Pi, the driver board for the LCD that just connects to the display and has the HDMI. And this is the Google Coral, and I'll mention that later. So as you can see, um, I've got holes uh, everywhere because I like to make things with screws. Screws are far superior to all other forms of attachment, uh, in my opinion, because I'm always assembling and disassembling things, and this is a non-permanent way to fasten things, and they look cool. So all this is going to screw together, and all of the uh, more curved pieces are going to be 3D printed. I'm going kind of fast because I don't think there's a whole lot to say about this. Um, but if you guys have any more questions about this part of the 3D model, um, I'm happy to answer them uh, in the comments below. So let's go ahead and 3D print the parts that are going to be 3D printed and laser cut the parts that are going to be lasered. And then I can start testing out the electronics so we can start detecting coffee mugs. This plastic spaghetti was brought to you by CraftBot. Thanks CraftBot for sending over the machine. If you're interested in a high-end 3D printer that can print big things successfully, if you know what you're doing, head on over to craftbot.com. Check them out in the link in the description below. Dual IDEX actually saves a lot of time when making two parts at once. Okay, so let's get to putting everything together. No particular order of operations, but I'm going to start with the Raspberry Pi camera into its 3D printed bezel. All right, now we have the structure of my Securitron head and I am I'm pretty satisfied, like that's gonna be, that's gonna be a good size. Now, I didn't need to do it this way, but it needs to look like a Securitron because then that motivates me to keep working on this. But now that I've got the physical structure, let's talk about the electronics, because if I want this to do computer vision, I'm gonna need, well, a computer and some sort of vision sensor. So my main processor is, of course, the Raspberry Pi. You can see it in this shiny aluminum heatsink case. I'll leave a link to that in the description below. There's not a lot going on here. It's just connected via HDMI to the HDMI driver board for my eight inch uh, Pimeroni uh, display. And on the side right here, we've got the secret ingredient for today's episode, the Google Coral, not sponsored. So Raspberry Pi is perfectly capable of doing computer vision on its own, but this little widget right here is a machine learning coprocessor. And it's really cool because it will allow embedded systems to process, you know, neural network data and all that machine learning business. I'm a novice when it comes to this, so please don't leave me machine learning questions. I literally just went through the absolute basic tutorial. Okay, so let's do a basic demo using the built-in models using tools. I've got my shop, I've got a dead blow hammer, some scissors, a wrench. So let's see what it can do. Now you'll notice I've turned them upside down because uh, annoyingly the annotate text function cannot be rotated. It's not intended for use. So because the screen is rotated 180, degree, 180 degrees, um, everything else has to be 180 degrees if we're going to read it and have the image the right way up. All right, see what we got this time. Oh, sewing machine, power drill. Nope, oh, screwdri oh, screwdriver, also still, I mean, still wildly inaccurate. Let's try tape measure, power drill, desk, pill bottle. Nope. What about unopened pair of scissors? Hard disk, jeweler's loop, incorrect. Sunglasses, espresso maker, cash register, toilet seat. Well, at least it's really confident this time. It is really good about noticing computer keyboards though. 
I don't know guys, I'm not real confident in the ability of this uh, model to detect things. But this isn't my trained model, this is the default one. So hopefully my trained version will be a lot or at least accurate at all. I was about to say better, but it maybe um, will infer anything else other than a power drill. Anything, please, dear God. So I'm using an online service called Teachable Machine to create my model, and it's a browser-based service for creating machine learning models using just your web camera and, well, a browser. And I'm not an expert, so you should go and watch uh, Daniel Schiffman over on the Coding Train YouTube channel to check this out more in depth. But it was really easy to get started, so that's how I made my model, and guess what? It totally works. All right, let's run the model. And yes, it's upside down. Don't care about that right now. This is just proof of concept. All right, so default always assumes that a coffee mug is in frame. Let's show it, Vault Boy. Right, let's get more of that in frame. Oh wait, 99% no. Vault Boy. Default coffee mug. All right, let's get that platinum chip in there. Platinum chip. 100% coffee mug, that's not correct. All right, let's try that again. Vault Boy, 99% Vault Boy. Vault Boy is much better. He's got a lot of contrast and a lot of distinct features. That, <laughs> all right. Coffee mug, Vault Boy. Coffee mug, Vault Boy. So it wasn't ideal that I trained it on a plain background because it's defaulting to a coffee mug as, well, anything else. So let's try and get that platinum chip again. It's not a coffee mug. Really need to fill the frame. Obviously this was trained with my web camera. You know what, I should really train it with the Raspberry Pi camera itself as opposed to my desktop web camera. But Progress. We can detect certain things and I didn't have to be a computer science expert to do so. Surprisingly easy. Not a lot of hiccups. Find all the links in the description below. <sighs> but we are on our way. We are on our way to finally cleaning up my kitchen.